meeting to order for uh, uh, January 19th, 2023. Uh, Ms. Jasensky, please call the roll. Here. Here. Mr. Harrison? Here. Mr. Martelli? Here. Mr. Garagini? Here. Mr. White? Here. Thank you. All rise for the pledge. Good evening, everyone. Large audience this evening. Um, <laughs> and Vice Chairman Grippo filling in for uh, Mr. Perigini, Mr. Perigini this evening. Couldn't make it, or was uh, under the weather, actually. Um, not that he's abdicating his duties. I don't mean that. Give that impression. Um, so uh, we'll uh, move on to student representatives, Monica and Michael. The floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for having us. I hope you had a great holiday break. And um, so to start us off, the band had their holiday concert back in December, and they had this with the orchestra in the John H. Lorp Auditorium. And then today was the first day of midterms for CHS students, and they're lasting until next Tuesday. And then... Um, there's also a bunch of midterm prep that was being offered in the past couple of weeks by Link Crew, which is like a freshman orientation team that also paired with Scope, which is a peer, um, peer tutoring group. And they um, offered help to any students who signed up in the back of the library throughout the past two weeks, which was very helpful and had really good feedback. And then quarter three and semester two begin next week on January 25th for all students. And the Winter Guard will be performing in the East Gym on Friday of next week, February 3rd at 8 p.m., which is a free event. Also, back in December, Winterfest had a very successful um, run for their year. And we don't have the exact amount of money that they raised, but I'm pretty sure it was around like 3000 which is very good. All right. So the Supermarket Challenge is taking place on January 29th from 7 to 8 p.m. at ShopRite in Wallingford. This challenge is run by the Peer Health Educators, um, and then they, they gather sports teams and clubs from CHS in groups of four to six, and they race around the store to see who can be the first to collect $100 worth of food. All the food collected goes to the Cheshire Food Pantry. So if you're shopping at ShopRite on the 29th between 7 to 9 p.m., and you see a bunch of students running around the store, just know it's for a good cause. The Student Senate is running a warm gear drive from January 16th to 27th. Gently used or new winter gear will be accepted. Our beloved secretary, Mrs. Stewart, just recently retired. She dedicated 31 years to CHS, and she was truly an amazing secretary who did so much for our school. On her last day, CHS students and staff surprised her as she parked her car by giving her a grand welcome. The band played the drums as she walked in, and we all lined up to cheer as she stepped into those doors for the last time. There were many balloons as well. At the end of the day, athletes lined the doors and cheered for her also. She'll be missed at CHS, and we wish her, we wish her the best. We got to welcome former Dodd's secretary, Mrs. Braun, into CHS. She will be the new secretary to Dr. Gad. We know that she'll do a great job, and we're grateful to have her. On January 9th, Dr. Solon held a pizza lunch with students. We got to eat some pizza and we had a fruitful discussion on social emotional learning for students and ways we can improve our school. The class of 2024 just recently held a fundraiser for their prom, which is scheduled to be on April 29th. Also, bathroom vandalism is often a big issue at CHS. Unfortunately, Tens of thousands of dollars have been spent just on repairing our bathrooms so they can be usable for students. This money could have been used for many better causes like buying incoming freshmen new Chromebooks or funding fun and educational field trips. But instead, it's unfortunately wasted because our bathrooms are destroyed. Not only this, but due to the vandalism, numerous bathrooms are locked and shut down, causing students to, in some cases, walk to the other side of the school just to use the bathroom, causing them to miss important things in class. This affects every student in the building and everyone desires for it to be better. So to try to fix this, Kobe Zhang, a junior at CHS, 
and myself are creating a video to stand up to this behavior and show that we're better than this as CHS Rams. Monica is actually featured in it. So we're making a video and yeah, it's to show we're better than this. And then part of the video includes getting interviews from CHS students, sharing their thoughts on the issue, as well as the qualities that us as students should strive to uphold, including caring for our neighbor, kindness, integrity, things like that. It also includes multiple groups of students saying clean bathrooms rule or vandalism is not cool to show unity in the student body and show that uh, we were striving for safe, clean and open bathrooms. And we're hoping this can inspire some change in our bathrooms. And in addition, we're putting up some pictures on the bathroom doors with the one and only Ramsey, our school mascot, to remind people to do the right thing in the bathrooms. Also, business teacher Mr. Peasy is starting up a group called the Boys Bathroom Improvement Squad, which is a group of guys who, it hasn't started yet, but it's a group of guys who uh, will go into the bathroom and do like a basic cleaning of the bathrooms during their study halls. And we've been working with Mr. Todd Rally, assistant principal, to try to develop a plan as to when and what to do to reopen our bathrooms, and we're continuing to strive towards positive change. Um, the Cheshire track and field star Colin Brown has been going off this um, indoor track season and recently he beat his own school record in the 55 meter dash with a time of 6.42 seconds. That's impressive. <laughs> and mock trial, the Cheshire mock trial team is going to the playoffs for the first time in five years, which is very exciting. And the trial was held on December 20th in the New Britain courthouse. And then the chorus concert was last week, January 11th, and they had a stellar performance. And also they were joined by Dodd Middle School who um, performed right before them. And then on Tuesday of this week, January 17th was the first day that District Chorus Day was held, which is similar to District Orchestra Day in that the sixth graders from all around um, Treasure Public School systems came and they were in the auditorium and they um, saw performances by the Cheshire High School Choir and the Dodd Choir, and then they themselves gave a performance to the both of us, which was pretty exciting. And that's all we have for tonight. So that's all. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And um, I guess the the bathroom issue has been one that we've been trying to deal with for many years. So I'm oh, really? glad to see the student uh, some student solutions out there, student teacher solutions. Uh, so we'll try and work in league and maybe you know, further that cause. Um, are there any questions? Unfortunately, I have a bathroom question. Is it? Do you think it, or do you know if it's um, the male bathrooms or the women's bathrooms or the men's bathrooms? So it's mostly the males' bathrooms that have been vandalized and stuff. Um, yeah, it's just it's it's mostly the males, and um, we're just we're trying to show that we're better than this and stuff. And you know, it's not cool to vandalize bathrooms, and oh, that it. money can be um, like you know, go towards positive causes and stuff and educational causes. And hopefully we can try to, you know, make some change with that. Yeah. And you're teenagers. You're not children, right? Right. Exactly. Thank you. Faith, go ahead. I just want to commend you on that, um, especially on what you're doing. Well, with everything, but especially on the bathrooms and um, the fact that you're cleaning them. Like, I couldn't even ever get my kids to clean them. So I really applaud you guys. And um, I, along the lines of questioning with, of Anne's, um, is it going, and you guys may be able to help, is this going on during the day? Is it going on weekends, during games? Do Because I would think someone would hear something. or And do you have like a, will you do a see something, say something campaign or... Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. We're going to try to, you know, cause like really it's up to us as students to stand up to the issue because we're the ones that use the bathrooms and stuff. So, you know, it's up to us to show that we're better than this. And definitely like you're saying, you know, the, if they see something, we encourage them to try to, you know, stand up for that because they're not being snitches by telling an authoritative figure they're doing the right thing because it's causing the person that's doing the destruction to stop. And it's also helping the people that, have to use the bathroom in the future. So it's actually a win-win situation because it stops the destruction and it helps the other people for when they have to use the bathroom. Any other, I guess while, while we're talking about bathrooms. So at 6.15 tonight, the planning committee, Matt, 
my three colleagues here, and we went through this five-year capital plan right here. So this is a list of all of our school buildings and different projects across the district. So anything you can do to stop the bathrooms being vandalized, we greatly appreciate because we have to make really hard decisions as to what happens at our schools. And, you know, it's, it's better for us to be repairing roofs that are leaking than going after and putting good money towards repairing bathrooms that then get damaged because there's only so much money to go around. So thank you, Michael. And thank you, Monica, as well. I heard you. So you're in the video, though. So Monica is featured in the video. Okay, so I mean, you had to pirate it. Oh yeah. And um, by next, you know, board of ed meeting, we should um have the video shown to students and stuff, and we'll, we should have an update for you guys on on um on what the status of the video and stuff. Love to see it. Yeah, that oh, absolutely. That screen. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'd be happy to share it with you guys. So I. I PSA, love the idea. Do you have a next step be, besides the video? Is there another plan moving forward, tracking any data just to make sure like, okay, we know it stopped for a bit, but it might come back again. So what's what's our next step? Definitely. Um, so there's been some some proposals and stuff like when our boys bathroom improvement squad uh, eventually starts up, you know, we hope to Mr. Pisa was suggesting like, you know, if we can record a certain period of time where there's no vandalism at all then we could reopen our bathrooms. Or, you know, Mr. Tartarelli is also thinking about ways we can reopen our bathrooms. So definitely it's being talked about and then change is not far ahead. It's, it's coming up soon. And, um, you know, we're hoping we can get those bathrooms open, get them cleaned and um, let's make our bathroom experience better. Oh, go ahead. I love that you're called the squad and I think that that is really important because you're, you're take, the students themselves are taking ownership of their property, and that's what's going to make the difference. It, it's a completely different thing if other kids are ruining their peers' experience and their peers' equipment than if they're doing it and having the adults and the authority figures, as you say, do all the picking up after them. But if they're making their own peers clean up after them, you know, it's going to have an impact. So I commend you for, for all that you're doing. Thank, Thank you. you. And um, yeah, that's the thing, you know, we hope that since it's a student led thing that, you know, it'll, it'll inspire some, some good behaviors and stuff. And, you know, we're hoping that the people that are doing the vandalism can get the, the help that they need. Quick supplement, uh, shout out to Colin, you guys made the, the shout out to Colin Brown. He was a record journal athlete of the week this year, or this week was kind of nice to see. And then uh, I second that the concerts were really amazing. They're available on our YouTube channel as well. If you haven't seen them yet and want to check it out, good stuff. Mr. Solon's Instagram page is a real supporter of the concerts. So. <laughs> In the Okay. Uh, well, Monica and Michael, uh, thank you very much for your report. You can stay if you wish, but you are uh, free to go. And, uh, yes. yeah, good luck with midterms. Thank oh, you. Man, go study. <laughs> Have a great uh, evening. Okay. Uh, moving on, uh, we'll move on to audience. Um, is there a member of the audience who wishes to address the Board of Education? Please step up to the microphone and uh, give your name. Seeing none. Okay. We will um, move on to committee reports. Um, first up is finance. Uh, that would be uh, uh, my committee. Um, let's see. Let me uh, get the right reports here. And uh, as usual, I'd like to hand off to Mr. Massiana. <laughs> Thank you. I'll keep it brief this evening, as you've heard enough from me on finance and, and funding on Tuesday night. The uh, board members do have the finance report through December, and, and really the report is simply that, you know, despite some of the challenges of inflation, electricity, you know, cost of heat and energy, it's been a relatively mild winter, uh, fortunately for us. You know, our budget is uh, still holding well. The, this year's budget is eighty million six hundred sixty-four thousand four twenty, and we will meet that budget um, based on what I uh, 
by all accounts and all measures at this point in time, we still are holding about 50% of our budget funds um, for non-payroll expenditures in reserve, as, as we normally would be doing at this time of year. We're about halfway through the year. So we'll keep that going until we get probably into February, and then we could start releasing so that the schools can make um, purchases as, as they need it. That is the finance report, and if you'd like, I'll touch quickly on the medical benefits uh, report, which a copy was distributed on Tuesday evening at the budget workshop, but I do want to highlight um, some of the December numbers, in which, again, the board members do have the report. The um, claims for the month of December, you know, did come down off of November, which unfortunately was a record high, 1.6 million, and that is an all-time record high, not just an annual high. December's claims at 1.1 million, you know, were a significant decrease, about $100,000 over the $1 million per month expected. Um, but we did receive some um, stop loss and prescription rebates during the month. So even though our claims exceeded the million dollar mark, those rebate and stop loss reimbursements actually helped increase the fund uh, reserve balance by 171,000. So we ended the month of December with a reserve balance of 884,000. That's about 0.8 months in claims reserve. We know that we'd like to be at uh, about two months of claim reserves, so we're, we're beneath that. As we hit January, the new HSA plan year begins, and because employees' uh, first dollars will be spent until they meet their deductible and won't hit our claims, you know, we do expect and certainly hope that over the next three to four months we see our claims are below the million dollars per month expected, and so that'll help us buoy up the reserve balance. And that's medical benefits at this point in time, so I'll stop if there are any questions. And then there is one more agenda item, and which is an update on the 23-24 budget meetings, which I'll let Mr. Grippo, you can do that one. Thank you, Mr. Massiana. Um, so, uh, first thing for me, um, I guess my only question was: um, you did a uh, a little write up here about our electrical rates mm. going from eight cents per kilowatt to twenty four cents per kilowatt. Is that locked in? Because you had you mentioned something else here about twelve point nine four, and so I just yeah, wanted... I'll, I'll explain. So the rate lock that we had at about eight cents expired in December during the months of. January and February, we do not have a locked-in rate. So we are we are basically paying a rate based on a daily fluctuation. And the we came in at around 15 cents for um, January month to date, which isn't too bad considering that Eversource's rate is about 24 cents per quick kilowatt hour right now. We were able, effective in February, to lock in at the 12 cent rate and that will take us through November. So we do have a lock beginning in February. It's the best we could do. You know, we, we really went after the market aggressively, but you know, electricity rates really jumped over the last year. And we, I, I wish we could have locked something in before we knew there was a spike coming, but who knew? Right. So, um, you know, we, we will be over budget in, in our electricity category that's accounted for in the finance report and we'll continue to monitor it. And, it, you know, hopefully as we get through the remainder of this year, we'll see electricity rates come down overall. And, you know, we would be in a position to lock, you know, in the later part of this year. And there is some good news. Oil prices, you know, have come down and kind of stabilized, you know, we're still below eighty dollars per barrel. You know, we, you know, we had crested ninety dollars per barrel, so that might be a good lead indicator. But we will see what happens. Uh, any questions? No. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, so, with regard to the rates, what you're saying is you've locked in a rate basically below 24 cents or beginning February we're 12, 12 cents and, and change. No, I'm saying like right now, 
No, we are not locked until Any February. Rate. Right. So, I mean, in theory, if we have a polar vortex in the next two weeks, the price of electricity could skyrocket because all the natural gas gets sucked up for home heating. And we're exposed to that. In terms of uh, financially, we're exposed to the rates going up to a dollar per kilowatt hour or even more than that. Well, if that happened, we would just go back to Eversource. Okay, got it. Right. So that that's available to us, but we don't need to do that just yet. Okay, and you can do that like on a twenty-four hour cycle or something uh, like it that. Probably would take a bit longer than that, but we all right, could, we could get back to Eversource. That is always available to us. All right, so yeah, I just ask that you be mindful of it because if you're literally are out, this is this is part of what goes back to literally Gray Davis getting recalled in California and Schwarzenegger being elected governor blackouts in California. This is, um, those rates can, uh, so I don't know the exact rate you have, but if it, if there's no cap to it, it could go way up, not to just 24 cents, but it could go way above that. So just to be mindful of that. Always looking. Okay. But you know, you just said a dollar that's, um, have we ever seen that? This is no, in Connecticut, no, but this is probably that moment in time because of what's happening in yeah. Ukraine and natural gas. I'm not saying it will happen, but literally we've been lucky that it's been so warm. And it is what happened back in California 15 years ago or whatever. It was directly related to electricity prices spiking, blackouts happening, um, just to be mindful of it. Yeah. And, and, we, and to maybe find out what the turnaround would be if you wanted to switch over to Eversource, how long would that take? Yeah, I'll, I'll check. We do have a consultant that helps us okay. with this, Rachel Bogger. So I'll, I'll touch base with Rachel. But she's kind of looking at the markets for us constantly. Yeah. So um, she's really good. Okay. I'll talk to her. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't know, I'd say at that point, if we went to dollar kilowatt, it almost sounds like you pull up the emergency generators and run on diesel. <laughs> yeah, instead right. of a, yeah. Do that. We would shut that everything down. Cheaper. You know, we'll unplug the school. Yeah, it yeah. could be an, it could be an option. Yeah, well, well, hopefully that won't happen, but it could from what I've seen from the weather. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, yeah, it, that's possible. Um, let's see. Report on budget meetings. Uh, so uh, we had uh, let's see. We had the uh, uh, superintendent's uh, presentation last week. Um, let me see. Hold on. I'll, I'll just. Uh, I had a, I made up a little cheat sheet actually, so we could put all the fun news all in one place. It's actually, uh, Dr. Solon, you put it right here. Here it is. Remember you asked me why. So here we go. Um, so um, this nice little um, cheat here is that um, uh, Dr. Solon uh, made our, uh, a budget request. Uh, the uh, the uh, budget that we are currently uh, having hearings about and examining. Um, the uh, request is for um, an increase of 6.46%. Uh, that's five, an increase of $5.2 million for a total request of $85,872,000. Um, uh, on Tuesday, we went over medical benefits. And there was a, another topic. Uh, Mr. Massiano, if you could uh, refresh me. Uh, what did we uh, went over medical benefits and certified, non-certified? Oh uh, yes, and uh, yes, of course, all of our uh, employee uh, costs. Um, and uh, that unfortunately wasn't super enlightening because we were sort of in, familiar with a lot of that already. Um, but uh, it's uh, great for the public to know and to kind of know that I think we are up to almost seventy percent uh, of our budget is uh, uh, fixed or no. What was it? Ninety-four percent of our budget is fixed costs, essentially As salaries, yes. contractually, uh, contractual obligations such as for transportation. Right. Yeah. Everything. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Um, we went over a portion of that uh, on Tuesday, and we will continue to do that next week. Um, so that's sort of what's happened in the last uh, two weeks, in a nutshell. Uh, are there any comments or questions, Ann? Yeah, I, I think it's um, important, especially maybe this year as we go through budget season, to, um, to, to just point out that we are growing as a community, right? Uh, Cheshire is growing, our grand list is growing, as well as our population and our school-aged 
children in this town are growing. And so um, that is really behind why our, bud why our budget's going up. And, it's, and um, I just think that we should all be looking at the positive side of the reason that our budget is going up. It's, it's not all doom and gloom, right? It's, it's because we're growing. So I just wanted to put the positive spin on that. Thank, Thank you. you, Ann. Um, Faith. Um, I guess I'm one of those negatives, but um, I just would like to point out that most of what we're seeing is increases in salaries and benefits that are beyond our control. I love that Cheshire's growing. Um, I love that my property values are growing and I do hope that our grand list is growing with actual commerce and not inflation. But um, I am real concerned and I think I've made it pretty clear about what's going on in, in how to bring these costs under control and how to um, curb the mandates that are costing us so much. Uh, it, you know, this is money that needs to go to our students. It needs to go to our facilities. And a lot of what we're seeing, um, and I'll raise more of it as we, as we discuss it, to me is um, borderline frivolous. Uh, and I don't know how to get the message to Hartford that they have to cut us some slack. But, um, and I totally agree with you. I am very happy that our community is growing as it is and that we're seeing the growth in our elementary, our elementary grades because uh, that is the future of Cheshire. Um, but there are a lot of people who are going to be hurting with this budget. And so, um, you know, that we have to be mindful of that as well. So thanks. Thank you, Faith. Uh, any other comments? Okay, uh, seeing none, uh, that will conclude the Finance Committee. Uh, we'll move on to the uh, Legislative Committee. Uh, Mr. White. Thank, thank you, Adam. Can I back up for one second on just a question about medical benefits? Uh, yeah, go, oh, yes, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Thank you, yeah, just um, an administrative question. So we, we're budgeting a million dollars a month for medical benefits? For claims. For claims, for claims. yes. Um, so we have a balance right now of about eight or 900,000. And we've now hit a peak of close to 1.7 million for one month. Administratively, we could, I don't think it's crazy to think we could go into deficit in one month. It would be, Highly unlikely, yeah. but it could happen. So here's my could question. Happen. At what moment in time does that really matter to us? Is it in February when it happens or is it at the end of the year in June? Can you just move the money around from a timing perspective that it doesn't matter right now or would it matter right now? Well, if we did go negative, yep. we would have to make sure that we we buoy up the reserve. Yep. So we could one way to do that would be to reduce our expenditures. And as I said, we have a 50% hold right now on non-payroll expenditures. The other thing we could do is request funds from the town council as part of the, as you know, part of our normal course of action. Um, but I, I will say this, if we do, you know, go negative, the likelihood we will go negative is from a large claim or a series of large claims. And so there would be reimbursement on the stop loss side. So, I, as I sit here today, I don't believe we'll be negative for the year. So in but it short, could happen. Yeah. So in short, initially, we're drawing off operating budgets to cover the the balance, okay. right? All right. In time, if you know, Vin talked about a stop loss reimbursement. You net all that out. There comes a point where we have to spend operating, and we can no longer draw off that to cover the balance. That wouldn't be February. That would be May, perhaps. Okay. If we're still in the red, we need to have a, a conversation with the council. If we're not, then okay. no harm, no foul kind of thing. Okay. Something worth, obviously we're closely monitoring. As Vin said, January, uh, the historic trend is, as we enter the new claim year, the claims are, less than they have been in previous years. 
But as you saw at our budget presentation, what's driving costs are not sniffles. They're on, on really unfortunate, substantial medical issues that some of our employees have endured. Um, the likelihood that that continues is small, and we pray that that's the case uh, for those individuals and us, but we're going to closely monitor it. Okay. Yeah, no, thank you for all that. My, yeah, my, my key concern was just could something happen in the next few weeks where we actually need to act in a quick fashion? And you're saying, no, we need to be on top of it. But we still have through the end of the year to end of the count fiscal year to work through it. Okay. That's all I was wondering about. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. Legislative committee. Uh, thank you, Adam. So uh, a week ago, the legislative committee met of the, the committee of, I'm the chair's, chair of the legislative committee. Um, we met to uh, discuss possible requests of the legislature, their session opens in January, it runs until June when they, I think that's when they would usually be done with a lot of their bills. Um, anyway, we, we brought forward, I don't think, we didn't bring forward anything from any particular board members. Of course, we're all welcome to do that maybe in future years, something like that will happen. But what we did bring forward was a list of, I think, six items that were requested by the superintendent. Um, I think we all agreed that they were um, worthwhile requests of the legislature. And with that, I will give it to the superintendent if he has, if he wants to add any commentary to it about the particular items or anything else. No, I, I, you know, on our website, we have the legislative uh, items that were submitted to Hartford. It's an ongoing dialogue uh, over the next couple of months as, um, you know, Senator Sampson and Representative Zupkis indicated last week, you know, we'll probably be asked to share our perspective, anything that we share. Certainly all of us are welcome to do so individually, uh, not as representatives of the Cheshire Board of Education, but member, you're a member who sits on the board and have a, have a unique individual perspective. If there's something that is going to be testified upon from a uh, representative of the, the body, that should come through us on the legislative committee or the board, full board, um, that I would submit testimony on, or one of us could submit testimony on. Um, it's just kind of a how this should play out over the next couple of months. The legislative session uh, formally gets underway the 25th. I mean, bills are submitted now, but the, the actual session starts the 25th, doesn't close until June 7th. So this is an extended session that they'll be meeting this year. And um, I think it's important to note that um, probably the, the biggest point of discussion was the uh, the right right to read reg legislation, which, um, you know, we we're just talking about, you know, testimony uh, for legislation. And it was at least for me, it was revealed that I'm sure some of you knew that already, but the, that that legislation was not did not have a hearing. It was part of the implementer bill, if I'm not mistaken, which right. means it was put in uh, right at the end of session where there was no opportunity for uh, public discourse. Um, so in that case, we weren't able to, uh, administration or uh, board members from apparently all around the state as uh, Chairman uh, Perigini, uh, uh not testified, but uh, said uh, at, at that legislative meeting that uh, we, you know none, none of the school districts and many of them are sort of against that legislation, um, didn't have an opportunity to speak about it. Um, but it is important that uh, when we have legislation we're all interested in, I know a few years ago there was a one on regionalization of some kind of services or re regionalization in general where we we're able to submit written testimony. Um, and so that that's something we that we have that ability to do um, so that we don't have to actually attend and you know travel to Hartford to attend in person that we can submit written testimony unless of course it's banned for some reason, which I don't know if that's ever happened, but it's may maybe it's happened. Uh, but I just wanted to add that comment. 
Get back to you, Tim. <laughs> it, I'll, I'll make one more comment on it. When you mentioned the right to read, uh, there to me, there are probably at least two different issues here, which is the actual program that's being that the public schools across the state are being directed to use. So the first point is using the program. The second point is also the transition. And this is like a fast track, like do it now <laughs> transition, which just doesn't really, in my opinion, I, I just think it's really wrong. I think if the state wants to direct the public schools to do things, that's within their right in, in general terms. But I also think that for any transition, uh, you should be given some time to make it happen in a, in a deliberate way. And that's not really happening here in this situation with regard to the right to read legislation. Sam? Um, you know, I appreciated the dialogue and them coming in to speak on what our ask was and so forth. And I did ask the question of what their agenda um plan for an agenda moving forward um, wasn't very much a clear answer, but at least Representative Zepkus gave us that she was forwarding a bill on um, education. I guess um, as part of the process, I appreciate the ongoing dialogue. So the question is basically, you know, we have a legislative breakfast coming up soon. What's our next step? Because clearly we're not the only district that has concerns. Um, and so for people listening, what what can they do to support our ask and so forth? The uh, I would I would think if you're new to the information, the a good place to start would be reviewing the PowerPoint that our legislative committee and board put together. It's available on our website. From there, certainly you know our, I appreciate that our. Uh, representatives, our delegation from Cheshire is accessible, you know, by reaching out to them. Um, you can just Google Cheshire delegation or uh, go on the state legislature website and reach out to the individuals who represent our community. Uh, the legislative breakfast is invitation through you know, board members and, and local representatives to engage the um, delegation, the area representatives, uh, and that'll be coming up uh, in February for you. I sent out an invitation if any of our board members are interested in attending that uh, and available that morning. Uh, certainly welcome to come and we can express to that audience there that day as well our perspective on this issue and, and provide that feedback. Anyone else? Just quickly, um, I think we need to be mindful of something that was brought up at that meeting, which is um, perhaps trying to have that meeting with our legislative representatives at an earlier date than right when the session is starting. So later in the fall. Yeah, I, so I agree on that. I think, I don't know if you remember, Jeff, I think that I probably brought it up in November. We tried to bring it, schedule something in December. Nobody was available from the legislative. We also had, you know, the, the November referendum was a yeah. real priority at the time. The other reality here is that we could hold this in September, but what happens is two weeks, like what's occurring now before the session where there's really uh a lot of meetings around these things all these proposals come forward um i think you know the lesson the takeaway is early but ongoing communication so i agree that you know maybe an initial connection earlier in the fall is beneficial but there's so much spaghetti that gets thrown at the wall that you could never anticipate um at the beginning of the session that it's important for us to follow that up and I, to give you a sense, I'll, I'll share with the board some of the proposals that have come forth. I sent you an email the other day, but every day at this time of year, there are new um, ranging from uh, nonsensical and outlandish to potentially meaningful. Well, it gets passed forward, so I'll share that with you. 
Thank you for that ex sure. for that sure. explanation. Same. But to Anne's point, though, having an early yes, but also kind of recapping at the end, I know we don't have meetings in the summer, but somewhere close to when the session ends, I'd love to have them come back and give us an update. Here's where we started in the process, and how did we end, and moving forward, what's next step for the next session? That's all. Oh, no, just as a... A point of clarification, Tim. I think you said something about the the state uh, Department of Ed can impose their will on Board of Educations. I believe you're incorrect on that. We are we enforce state law, which of course is what they did. They they got they got a law passed for this uh, right to read, which is now they're imposing their administrative powers to enact the law, just as a point of clarification. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I was avoiding the nuance. I just So the like legislature <laughs> had to sign off on that, and they did, whether or not they actually knew they were doing that. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can give them better. I will let's just leave it there. It was in the bill, and it passed. So um, is there any other uh, comments uh, for legislative committee? No? Okay. Uh, moving on to planning committee, Mr. Martelli. Thank you, Mr. Grippo. Um, tonight, actually, the planning committee met in this room at 6.15 um, and started looking at the preliminary draft of, sorry, started looking at the preliminary draft of um, the five-year plan with the 2023-24 projects. Just to reiterate or to remind folks, we look at the five-year, but we approve projects uh, each year moving forward. Um, so, you know, this year it's different than my board service over the past four years on the planning committee as we actually have an idea as to what projects are going to, well, we know what projects are going to happen. So we aren't looking at doing upgrades to schools that are going to be coming offline. So now we can really focus um, available dollars towards projects to stabilize and continue to maintain our existing school infrastructure. Um, I don't think it's appropriate to get into specific projects tonight. Um, we just saw this for the first time this evening, and we're going to work as a committee to kind of pare down and look to see what makes the most sense for 23 to 24. Um, additionally, we, um, the name's escaping me, hired a consultant to do space needs look. Antonazi. Antonazi Associates. and Associates. Um, we, they met um, over the past month or so. It did start looking at our existing school facilities to start the space planning needs for the future. It doesn't look like we're going to be in a situation for trailers for this coming year, but um, moving forward, we're going to keep a close eye on that. Once we actually have a report, um, we can share that with the full board. That's pretty much that's the update. If anybody has any questions. Um, if I may, um, so the uh, consultant, uh, Antonazzi, um, for the trailer, so there's, has there been any uh, initial analysis on needs or that's what we're hired the, the consultant to sort of a report on? That's what we hired the consultants to work on. And we, we met with um, Amy O'Brien, the principal at Doolittle and, and Scott Jeffrey, the principal at Highland, along with Rich Clavette, our facilities director, um, with associates from Antonazzi. They did a quick tour of the building. They have the layout of the building. They have the floor plans and more detailed construction documents for both buildings. They understand what our potential need might be over the next three years based on enrollment. So they're going to start in the background, you know, working on some ideas and we'll have a follow-up meeting, you know, to sit and go through and and talk into some more detail. So work's begun. Um, we'll have the information we need from them in in a few weeks for further discussion with the planning committee, but it, it'll be two to three months for them to issue the, the report that we're expecting from them. And the series of recommendations may not be, and I don't expect it to be limited to just adding trailers. There may be ways to repurpose some of the spaces that we have or any other creative ideas that, you know, they or we may come up with, um, you know, to try and get through year one, year two, and, and year three when the new schools are built and we would be able to redistrict. So it's just really a, a bridge strategy to get us to when the new schools are built. Thank you. 
Uh, any other questions for planning committee? Okay, moving on to policy committee and call on myself. Um, so uh, we had a, uh, well, a, a, a rather brief um, uh, policy meeting on, uh, let's see, what was the, Jan on January 10th. Um, by the way, I believe I did figure out my technical problem, but that's a whole nother story. Um, so uh, we reviewed uh, two policies for a second reading, uh, strategic goals, performance standards, uh, that's a 0025. Um, for, let's see, uh, what was the change that we did? Uh, to, oh, to adopt the strategic goals that the board had already approved. I guess we sort of we do that one backwards. Um, and uh, we uh, had all of our questions done uh, a meeting prior. So uh, we moved that for a second reading. Uh, uh, the, second policy, the second policy we moved for a second reading was our nepotism policy, uh, which, which we, um, uh, again, in, in a prior meeting had uh, strengthened our policy to sort of reflect um, current events so that it can remain strong and fair. Um, uh, we uh, moved to a uh, next, we uh, did a third, uh, third and final reading for the administering of medication, opioid, opioid overdose prevention, uh, the, the emergency administration of naloxone, which is a, um, an inhaled substance that uh, prevents um, or, or helps prevent overdoses from fentanyl, or if you have an overdose from fentanyl, it perhaps prevents uh, death or serious injury, right? Correct. Uh, um, and so we will be, uh, uh, moving that hopefully, uh, into, uh, in force this evening. Um, and that, uh, we can con concluded, uh, around, so it's at 6 51 PM, according to the, uh, notes I have here. Um, so I would like to, uh, make a motion, um, that the, uh, Cheshire Board of Education give a third and final reading to policy number 5141.213, administering medication, opioid overdose prevention, emergency administration of naloxone, and direct the superintendent to put said policy into immediate effect. Do I have a second on that motion? Um, Sam, I saw your hand go up first. Uh, is there any uh, comment or discussion on the motion? Seeing not, oh, Ann, go ahead. I have a basic question that I'm almost embarrassed to ask is is Narcan the same thing as Naloxone? Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. Thank you. No. Good question. I don't know my drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess what's that's the uh, official <laughs> medical name for it, I guess. Yeah. Um so all right, uh seeing no other uh further comment, uh, all in favor? Unanimous of those present. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, are there any other standing committees that need to report? I don't see anything on the agenda. No? Okay. Um, next, we'll go to the approval of minutes for meetings held December 15th, 2022 in January 12th, 2023. Uh, would someone like to make that motion? Uh, Faith, go ahead. Move that the Cheshire Board of Education approve the minutes from the meetings held on December 15th, 2022 and January 12th, 2023. Is there a second? Andrew, uh, any discussion or edits or amendments? Seeing none, all in favor? Unanimous of those present. Thank you. Ms. Harrigan, uh, is there any correspondence? I have no correspondence this evening. Okay. Thank you. We will move on to, of course, the highlight of the evening, the superintendent's report. I appreciate that, Mr. Grippo. Uh, and Sam stole a little bit of my thunder. Um, with her acknowledgement of the CABE legislative breakfast coming up in February, but no worries there. Uh, the um, Just two real quick things. Um, 
in addition to uh, what I'm going to touch upon with the school building committee, but Economic Development Council, I appreciate, um, you know, Mr. Martelli inviting me to participate in a meeting earlier this week. Uh, very productive, where we talked about how to, um, you know, kind of propel our, our symbiotic relationship between the Cheshire Public Schools and the business community. Uh, some really good ideas came out of that uh, and a great exchange. We look forward to continuing that as we evolve our um, school uh, business partnership committee that had been meeting um, and, and really needed uh, reinfused energy or newly infused energy, I guess. Uh, so I think we're, we're making good progress there. I look forward to that group uh, working together. The other thing I wanted to share, uh, make sure everybody was aware that we had applied for a grant for a new greenhouse. Um, in the planning committee meeting, uh, the members talked about the really decaying uh, condition of the Cheshire High School greenhouse. Um, and we received a state grant, which is, is really exciting to be able to build a, a greenhouse on the uh, Humiston property right next to the existing trailer we have there, uh, the storage trailer. So uh, that can be used by students across the district and including Humiston School supports um, our food services program and allows us to do more like local farm to table in a community that prides itself on our uh, bedding plants and our, our greenhouses. I'm excited to be able to, you know, continue to move that forward for our, our students in this community. Uh, go ahead. No, so actually, I just got from the assessor. We have 2.2 million square feet of greenhouse space in town. Holy smokes. So we'll add that to the count. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know if it'll, it's not going to move any commas on that. Uh, but anyway, so uh, there's, there's that piece. The um, Next Generation School Building Committee continues to meet um, actually, I really have to commend the volunteers on that committee. We are, in essence, meeting weekly now uh, with special meetings on the odd weeks that we didn't already have planned meetings on, on Thursdays. Tonight is a rare exception to that. Uh, the request for qualifications have been sent out for architects for each of the two projects. Um, we're currently receiving questions, uh, clarifying questions from architectural firms about the two projects. Um, as we receive those questions on the town website that posts the RFQs, um, we add these addenda uh, as they come, as the questions come in and we answer the questions. They have to be posted for everybody to see. Uh, though that's on our RFQ page, or RF, I think it's titled RFP page on the, on the town website. Um, but we should be receiving those in the coming weeks. We'll be evaluating those and moving to the town council to issue contracts for an architect, which is, is really exciting stuff. So that's where we are right now in the process. We started to evaluate requests for qualifications on an owner's representative, which um, will be the next um, phase that we issue. And I think that'll happen sometime next month. Uh, we're targeting February 9th, I think it is. Um, so the process is moving along pretty well right now. Um, I want to thank Sean Kimball, the, the, the town staff for their assistance, and uh, the town attorney, Jeff D'Onofrio. Uh, he's been super responsive and, and, and very helpful in our, our work. So thanks to everybody. That's it for me. Thank you, Adam. Um, so with, I know I mentioned it last month, so with regard to the RFP, was there a request for qualifications with respect to sustainable construction, history, knowledge? So the RFQ is, yes, we, we do. I think then, right, we talked about um, in the, R, we're asking for what are your qualifications as an architect? Sure, broad, yeah. And inherent in there, in, and, and that's actually one of the addenda that's going up is about um, sustainability uh, in, you know, are we adhering to just the lead silver 
uh, requirements or is there more in there uh, for that? So I think when we get the qualifications of the firm and refine that down to the interviewing and request for proposals, uh, that was something that we had talked about in the rating scales Okay. for when we actually interview these people. Okay. But I will certainly, you know, reinforce that when we get together with the group next Thursday uh, to talk about the rating scales. And my second question, when are you, these are public meetings? Yeah. Okay. And, and they're videoed as well. And, and when are they happening? Town hall? There's Generally, town hall, 7 o'clock um, in room 207. Okay. They're, but they're also simulcast uh, generally as well. Oh, okay. So okay. 7 o'clock, 207. Okay. Is when they usually are. They're usually every, every the, Thursday for the most part. They're often on Thursday. Okay. Uh, I would check sure. al almost every Thursday, but uh, certainly definitely next Thursday. There's there's a meeting on the 26th, which is a little problematic for our budget meetings. Sure. Um, so depending on what that agenda item is and what the budget meeting is, we may, Ben and I may have to split some responsibilities there, but. And this is, this is an organization or a, a body formed by the council, not by the board of ed. Correct. And so is it getting, are, are they getting the meetings posted on the town website? Yes. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. If you go to the Cheshire public schools website as mm -hmm. well, um, at the bottom, there's a banner that's, it's still there. School modernization. If you click there, there's good information on that page. Now it's been revamped from like, why do we need schools to basically what are the process? What's the process? Yeah. Including agendas, minutes, RFQ, like anything you could want the, the membership that it's all there. Okay. So I Thank would you. encourage people to, to visit that site Thank for you. more info. Just a point of clarification. So the town and the board did select the committee that's working on it now. Right. So who's helping to facilitate it as they're moving along? So the chairperson mm -hmm. of the committee is Rich Gussenberg. Okay. Uh, the, uh, both myself and Sean Kimball are ex officio mem voting members of the committee. Um, and the esteemed Mr. Vincent Massiana is often present to help guide us as well. Jeff D'Onofrio, town attorney, has been really helpful. Uh, so, at a, um, it, this is this is a big item, and I'm just curious if of all the information that you are putting out for all of us, do you have something just a basic tracker for the townspeople to financial tracker? You know, this contract has been awarded for this amount. Um, when the funds start coming in, this much has has been expended. Um, I think I do think people are going to want to be watching these costs, and I'm not sure if anything has been set up. But um, yeah, I don't, we, I'll watch it. But yeah, we haven't reached a point yet where anything's been at all expended. So um, ultimately, yeah, certainly we can do that. We just haven't. We're not there yet. Mm -hmm. A few months out for that. The next. The uh, council will ultimately appoint uh, uh, architect. Um, Vin, do you remember the day? I, think, I want to say it's March thirteenth in that neighborhood. Um, on Our our timeline. council meeting. Yeah, sounds so it's, about right. It's in that that neighborhood. Yeah, it's, um, it's the it's the March council. It's meeting. It's the March council meeting. Whatever. Andrew, you probably you might not remember this off the top of your head, but. We talked a lot about scheduling and um, kind of backed into the opening of the schools. Are we on target with the issuance of the RFQ for the architect? Are we ahead of that schedule? We're ahead of the schedule. We're ahead of that schedule. Well, we designed. And there's a lot of talk about the schools are going to be done in. And again, I believe I am not trying to pigeonhole. I understand, like, you know, we could have a monsoon, we could have a snowstorm. Like, all these things will definitely change. And I don't want to, I want to under promise and over deliver um, right. rather than the other way around. But does it look like we're getting closer to closing that window, perhaps, where the schools? So the initial um, timetable was established, I want to say almost a year and a half ago, with Colliers. Um, and our group has been very diligent. Uh, and, you know, 
relative to that initial timetable that was established, we are ahead of that timetable <coughs> pretty significantly. Good to hear. Thank you. Sam, did you have a comment? No, I actually. Okay. Um, I guess the uh, question is to uh, if uh, someone were to want to get uh, caught up in all the meetings, are these list are the are the uh, videos listed on the uh, town page or the uh, Cheshire Public Schools page or both? Town you know, page. Town page. Okay. Yeah. I could go back to our just for ease of access. Um, I could go back to our minutes and link the videos in in there. Yeah, for easy use. Um, and I, I know that uh, I attended the kickoff meeting. Uh, where there were discussions about whether or not to have, you know, an architect for each site or an architect for the entire project. Has there been a thought as to how they'd like to proceed as far as that, or has that sort of not been determined yet? That hasn't been determined yet. Um, architectural firms are invited to submit for one or both projects at this point. Um, and finally, just as a sort of a point point of clarification for Faith and anyone else, I believe um, all of these meetings are open to the public and that if you have any recommendations or suggestions that they also take public comment as well during the meeting. So if perhaps, uh, Faith, your great suggestion about a cost tracker, uh, may you may want to have that entered into the public record, uh, either whether written or uh, in person. So just as just as a thought there. Um, are there any other questions or go ahead? Just I'm um, going back to what the superintendent said about. So we applied for the, the greenhouse grant. We don't have a turnaround time yet for it. Vin, for are you familiar with the turnaround? Time? We applied. No, we, we right. got it. But is there a decision? Deadline? We got the grant. Oh, you did. Yeah, okay. we did. Oh, yeah. awesome. So yeah. my next question is, what's the enhanced the, the curricular enhancement? I know we're going to use this. Sure. So What's we, we offer courses like AP Environmental Studies. Yep. Biology is uh, life sciences are studied through all grade levels, really. I mean, there are certain, certainly focuses at different years, but uh, life science is a, is a significant part of our curriculum. Um, so there, there are tie-ins. The greenhouse uh, is not going to rival uh, Castor Tunnel Farms or something, you know, Kurtz Farms or whatever. The... Um, it, it, it's certainly not on that sort of scale. So it would be smaller groups that would go through there, maybe a class at a time. Um, but we, we don't want to get out a, ahead of our proverbial skis or, or plants or whatever you want. But uh, we certainly see the connections there. Uh, right now, it's smaller scale, hoping to build into something bigger. So we have it's some exciting. sort of scheme of... I'm just thinking like hydroponics and I don't know what the plan is when yeah, we build the I'll, greenhouse. I'll share the um, the uh, grant with you okay. so you can all see like basically what it entails in scope, mm -hmm. um, size, and the whole nine yards. Nice. Uh, it's really exciting yeah. to be moving down this road. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just wondering, do you, do you have a location for it? I know you've mentioned something before, but... Yeah, the... Um, <clears throat> You know, the rear of the Humiston building, there's a large uh, uh, storage building that it would be next to that on the interior side, not the street side. Gotcha. Thank you. Sure. You're just getting questions right now. Oh, it's all right. Um, so actually, this may be from Marlene, so you can take a break. Um, are there uh, opportunities, you know, we do a lot of uh, intern and apprenticeships. Have we started to reach out, perhaps since we are the betting plank capital of the world? Um, I'm sorry, Connecticut. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the world is good. Okay. Universe. I think it's Connecticut. Okay. Universe. Of New Haven County. Um, but is it, I have, has... I, I, you, you know, is there an opportunity um, for, because, you know, from a farming background myself, I, we, we are a shrinking number. So, um, you know, have, has anyone come forward, anyone expressed an interest or anything like that to engage our kids in career opportunities? 
I don't know of anyone who has stepped forward, but I know through Jeff's work with economic development and looking at now that COVID is over, we've been branching out more and more with getting back to our um, internships and really reinvigorating that after the shutdown. So there's lots of opportunity there. And I think that the opportunity that this greenhouse while small perhaps in size, is really going to give us some um, really nice opportunities for the future. And I know you've also been in touch, Jeff's also been in touch with some local folks with greenhouses to talk about possible opportunities, but nothing set in stone as of yet. Yeah, AJ Kurtz was great about providing us some guidance on different things. And so, you know, we definitely want to le leverage the resource that exists within our community and, and tie that together. And if I could just add faith to that point. Um, so Dr. Sola and I have been talking, you know, my other hat I wear for the town. Um, we are really working to identify students who might not be, who, who aren't tracking towards the college route and how we as a town can work with the board and with the school district in order to, Identify early, identify those students early on, and really start setting up programs in order to get some of the kids into either the manufacturing trades or agricultural trades that exist here in the community. Because there's a huge need for employees in those dis in those industries. And um, when I started going out and meeting with the manufacturers, I mean they wanted to be part of. So we set up this manufacturers roundtable, and it's been hugely successful already. And going into Treasure High School and making those connections for internship programs and getting kids there and also like reaching out to the parents and you know four-year colleges aren't for everybody um, and a lot of these kids are able to go right into and in two years able to buy a house with no debt and you know that's a really real thing and trying to um, help to facilitate that so it, it's in process and we had a great meeting on um, Tuesday morning um, Dr. Solon took about two hours of everyone's time but it, it went really well and at the end of that we came up with a list of different um, different programs and things that we could start to work towards and on the economic development commission with the town there's a lot of business owners and folks that are deeply rooted in the business community so um, we're working towards that so can i ask a question on the practical side because in my mind greenhouses are pretty movable even after they've been put up so when the day comes that we are replacing the hummiston building um, moving us all out, moving the kids, the students out, we'd be able to move the uh, greenhouse as well, correct? Um, I would think so. It's not, it is, as you say, it's it's uh, mobile. Yeah. Uh, it's big enough to not be easy. Yeah. You know, you'd have to take it apart, but um, definitely flexible. Great. Thank you. Dr. Solon, uh, this is, does that conclude your report? It does, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Okay, great. Thank you, Dr. Solon. Um, I, I don't think we have any old business on the agenda here. Um, uh, uh, Chairman Perugini did not supply me with a uh, chairperson's update, so um, we do not have anything there. Um, I guess uh, before we adjourn, I'll go over um, some of the uh, upcoming meetings here. Um, let's see, this one looks a little bit more up to date. Um, so January uh, 19th, um, we have a uh, planning. Wait, is that today? <laughs> okay, we'll skip it. Maybe it's not up. Maybe this one is more up to date. Okay, so. Already checked off. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm going to start down here with the budget stuff. So. Uh, January 24th, we have another um, uh, public budget review uh, meeting, and that's at Dodd Middle School, 7 p.m. Uh, January 26th, um, we have a uh, public information meeting uh, with uh, board member responses to superintendent's budget and with possible adoption. Um, we'll, we'll see about that uh, on January 26th. That's uh, 7 p.m. at Dodd Middle School. Um, we then have on February 1st is the calendar committee meeting. Um, uh, I'll just add a, a personal note. Perhaps there will be uh, some information about those reverse half, the reverse uh, 
uh, half day things that we've been doing. Uh, what, what are we calling that? Uh, delayed, uh, delayed opening. Delayed opening, not early dismissal. Delayed right. opening. Yeah. Um, I know I certainly got feedback about that in my own home. Uh, so pros and cons. Uh, pros, yeah. so, perhaps you'll have some uh, data about the, the effectiveness of that or if it was uh, liked by our staff. Um, let's see. Uh, February 13th uh, is a, a curriculum uh, committee meeting. Uh, that's in Hummiston boardroom uh, policy committee uh, on February 14th, uh, 630. And that's uh, going to be a remote live stream. And February 16th, uh, we have our next business meeting. Uh, and that will be in town council chambers at 7 30. um yes sir i'd just like to add um tonight we decided the next planning committee meeting reviewing the capital projects is february the 8th um and it's going to be a virtual meeting at 6 30 p.m Would that be of the whole or is that just a uh, just of the planning committee the planning committee okay fantastic thank you um all right i think i've uh, run out of things to say here so, um, oh, uh, comments, yes. I just have a, because my Polar Plunge partner is not here, but uh -huh. he would support the, you know, we highly encourage that any other board members who would like to join the team. I know Dr. Solon wants to do so this year. Um, I, Southington had a really major turnout, and I'm kind of competitive, so if we can. I've emailed all the <laughs> Cheshire faculty. Um and we have a donation page that's up and running. I haven't checked it since it started last Friday, but um, and I there are uh, many leapers, we'll call them, uh, ready to go, including football. Um, yeah, right. Uh, the water, if you, the water is about waist high for me, so it's not not real deep. Yeah. Uh, Tim, go ahead. Thanks. Yeah, I should have mentioned this before. This is probably for Vin. I have a secret inside source at Norton School, and she told me today that none of the kids get hot lunch anymore. I asked her about it because we stopped doing. Yeah, we started paying for meals this week, I think. Yep. And so just something to uh, have on your radar. If that is a significant thing. I mean, I, I didn't ask her about numbers, but she said she noticed everybody went from hot lunch to take home meals in some way so just have that be aware of that oh I'm, if there is something there I'm i don't know well aware that the food service um sales are way down this week okay yeah and was expected it was just a question of how far down and so it'll take some time to build back up but no doubt that we are serving less breakfast and less lunches okay you know since the um, families have to begin paying again gotcha Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate one place it. To go from hundred percent. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good, a good reminder that I have to put money into my uh, son's account. Yeah, right. uh, I have to do that tonight. Oh, uh, you'll be getting that reminder tomorrow. Because yeah. it, it is, it is Pizza yeah. Friday, right? So that's usually a popular yeah. one, at least for my son. So sales went down, and outstanding balances went up from parents. So right. those reminders are going out yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> um okay any other points of personal privilege seeing none uh motion to adjourn tim second come on all right there we go all in favor all right we are adjourned thank you